It's a great honor to welcome you back to the Kangoka Broadcast. My name is Chris Bikumana. Today is Tuesday. I want to share with you some words of encouragement for all the people who are filled with fear because of what they are going through. Sometimes you can be so full of fear that you start losing hope and your faith is weakened. You have many questions in your mind and you say, God, why am I going through these problems even though I believe in you? But let me tell you that if you believe in God, it doesn't mean that you won't face problems. I keep repeating repeating it in this broadcast because I want you to understand this. Remember that when the disciples were in the boat, a great storm came even though Jesus was in the boat with them. So if you are with Jesus, it doesn't mean that you won't face any problems. You experience some problems, but he will rescue you from those problems. When the disciples woke up Jesus, he stopped the storm. The storm ended because Jesus was with them. So if you are with Jesus, you should stop losing hope. You should put your eyes on him and you should be encouraged by the word of God. I want to encourage you this morning. No matter what problems you're facing, no matter how many debts you have, no matter how many bees are piling up in front of you, no matter how many scary messages you are receiving, don't be discouraged. Don't set your mind on the problems that you are facing. You need to set your mind on how big God is. The word of God is here to encourage you. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. This verse is talking about the enemies of Israel. But I want you to know that your enemies are those problems that you're facing. It's the situation that you're facing. It's those things that are scaring you. It's the demons that are attacking your family. Those are your enemies. Don't be afraid of them, but have faith. Don't be afraid. Don't lose hope. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you want God to be with you, you need to stop being afraid. You need to believe in him. You need to set your eyes on him. I want you to understand that everything depends on you. It all depends on your attitude. Your attitude will determine whether God goes before you or not. If you want God to go before you, you must put your eyes on him. If you keep your eyes on your problems, if you keep complaining about your problems, if you keep losing hope, if you keep telling everyone about your problems and you stop praying, there is no way that God will go before you. God will only go before you if you believe in him and if you refuse to be afraid. I'm not saying that you can't be scared by your problems. I'm not saying that fear won't come. Please hear me where. Fear will come, but you can defeat that fear with faith. You should say, it's true that this is scary. It's true that it doesn't look good, but there is God in heaven. You should speak those words every morning as you prepare your day. You should always say, no matter how bad the situation looks, I know that there is a God who's able. Praise the Lord. Declare that you know that God is able. Speak those words with your mouth. Don't just think about them, but declare them out loud when you pray. Just say, God, you able. I know that you can't leave me. I know that you are my father. I know that those who put their trust in you will not be put to shame. Those words will increase your faith. The verse read says, the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. It's the Lord himself who will go with you. I really love the part that says that he is the one who goes with you. You need to understand that every time you believe in him and you put your eyes on him and you say, I won't look anywhere else. You are the only one. I believe in you. I want to go with you. And you try to defeat fear through faith. He will go with you. He said that he will never leave you nor forsake you and he's not a liar. If you feel like God has abandoned you because you no longer have any dreams, you don't see anyone who can help help you, you feel like your prayers don't produce any results, I want you to know that if you think that God has abandoned you, it's a lie from Satan. Satan is lying to you. He's trying to convince you that God has abandoned you. But God cannot abandon you. God himself said that he will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you say that God has abandoned you, you are calling God a liar. It's as if you are saying, God, you have lied. You have said that you will never leave me nor forsake me, but you have abandoned me. No, God cannot lie. You need to stand on his word. You need to stick to his word. He has rescued you in the past and he will be able to rescue you today. He is still the God who created the heavens and the earth. We 
now in the teaching portion of the broadcast and we're going to continue the teaching called prayer and supplication as i told you at the end of yesterday's broadcast this week i want to take time to explain in detail the story that i started on friday i have learned a lot from the story of the roman centurion and i hope that you too can learn many things from this story this roman soldier wasn't qualified to receive a miracle but he was able to make a successful supplication and he received the miracle that's why we should learn from his story. At the end of yesterday's broadcast, I told you that even though this man was rich and he was a powerful soldier, he couldn't even approach Jesus because he knew that he wasn't qualified to receive a miracle. But he knew the stories about Jesus. He knew that Jesus performed many miracles. He knew that the blind were able to see and the lepers were healed. He heard that Jesus performed many miracles. Demon possessed people were set free when they met Jesus. The Roman soldier knew about all those things but he also knew that he wasn't qualified to receive a miracle because he wasn't a Jew, he was a Roman. But even though this man was a Roman, he was doing some very important things. Even though he wasn't a Jew, he loved the God of Israel and he supported the Jews. He considered the God as the true God and he used his own money to build a synagogue for the Jews so they can have a place to worship. That's why the Jews loved him. And when he sent them to ask Jesus to heal his servant, they were eager to go. You can see in Luke chapter 7 verse 3 that he sent elders of the Jews to Jesus and they pleaded with him to come and heal his servant. We're going to look at the words they used. Remember that I told you that this week we will take time to study this story in depth. So verse 4 says that when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly. It means that they were making supplications to him. They didn't just say that there was a Roman who wanted him to pray for his servant. No, that's not what they said. They came to Jesus and they made supplication to him. Sometimes when you pray, you ask God to give you some things you want. You can ask him to heal you or you can say, God, I want you to give me a husband. God, I want you to give me a child. I want you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want you to make a way for me. You are asking for things, but asking and making a supplication are two different things. These elders of the Jews weren't just asking. They were making supplications. And when you make a supplication, you need to base it on the word of God. You need to base it on a promise from God. You need to base it on good works. In the same way that the widows were showing the clothes that Dorcas had made. You need to have some tangible things that you can lift up before God. So verse 4 says that when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. They were saying that he deserved to receive receive the miracle. When you make a supplication, you need to bring evidence that you have the right to receive what you are requesting. If you are seeking justice in a court of law because someone has stolen your house, you need to present to the judge some proof that the house really belongs to you. You can bring the property title which shows that the house is registered in your name. The judge will consider an official property title because it has a lot of value in his eyes. You can just cry to the judge and say that your house was stolen and that you want it back. That's not enough. You have to present some evidence to the judge. These elders of the Jews came to Jesus and they made supplications to him. They said that the Roman soldier deserved to receive a miracle. But you need to know that it's not enough to say that someone deserves a miracle. If those elders of the Jews had only said that the man deserved a miracle, Jesus would have continued his journey in the same way that he initially ignored the Canaanite woman. Jesus doesn't want you to just say, so and so deserves a miracle or I need a miracle. If you want your prayer to have power, if you want him to answer you, you must demonstrate why that person deserves a miracle. Even though those elders had said that the Roman soldier deserved a miracle, that wasn't enough. They had to demonstrate why the Gentile man deserved to receive a miracle even though he wasn't a Jew. God wants you to remind him about his promises. He's very pleased when you speak to him about his promises. So in verse 5, the elders of the Jews continued their supplication and they said two things to Jesus. First, they say that this man loves their nation and that's very important. And secondly, they say that this man had built a synagogue for them. God willing, we continue tomorrow. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great day. 
If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.